how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright. Okay, so last time I said this was going to be my home ownership journey part three. Um, so that is kind of what it's going to be. So last time I did a very different for me kind of vlog uh, experience, sort of the letting guys sort of see a little bit of what I went through with the whole creating an offer. Um, by the end of, of all that, because of how things work, unfortunately, I didn't actually know uh, then whether or not my offer had been accepted. Um, but I do know now, you know, the, my, the, the last offer that I put in um, has been accepted, so I've had an offer accepted, yay. <laughs> um, and fingers crossed, all going the way that it should, touch wood and whatever else, I will be a homeowner sometime in the near future. Um, obviously nothing is set in stone yet, so this is kind of one of the think maybe more nerve-wracking parts of, of the journey. I mean, in some ways I'm kind of lucky because I am both the start and end of this chain because it's an, a vacant property and I'm moving from rented accommodation. So in some ways it's kind of like, yeah, okay, there's not as much that can go wrong. I'm not having to wait on loads and loads of other people to, to get anywhere. Um, but at the same time, it's a company sale, which means that the property will still be advertised um, right up until the, the point of exchange of contracts, which means somebody else can come along and put in a better offer and I could, you know, potentially lose it or, you know, elsewhere something else could go wrong and I could lose it that way. Um, as it stands right now, there's been some progress made. So I've met with my mortgage advisor. Um, so my mortgage is being sorted, um, obviously pending final decision at the moment. Um, I've had my homeowner survey thing <laughs> that, that was done a couple of days ago, so I still don't have the results from that yet, which again, I think can affect my mortgage application. Um, so all of that is kind of a little bit nerve wracking. Um, I've got a solicitor who I'm happy to work with. And so far, I think I've done everything with them I need to be doing in order to get things uh, rolling. And you know, they've, they've not chased me for anything uh, yet. So <laughs> um, I think I'm on track with everything that I need to be doing there. So it's just a lot of waiting and hoping that things, you know, go the way that I want them to. Um, and then on the other hand of that, because Buying a property is expensive and not just in the sense of having to have a deposit and, and having to get a mortgage. There's also other little bits and pieces that you need to pay for. Um, some of it up front and some of it later on. And I just spent my last week or so just, just looking at my savings slowly depleting uh, because of those things. Um, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm a low income earner, which means I don't have a lot of savings, partly because I've spent so much of the last couple of years shoving as much of my savings as possible into my help to buy ISA. Um, so obviously that's meant that a lot of my, my savings is just, you know, it, it hasn't really had that opportunity to sort of build itself because when you're shoving most of what you can save into your help to buy ISA and then not touching that, you then don't have a lot of additional savings to do anything with. Um, you know, I've got enough. <laughs> had to juggle some of my finances around a little bit, um, and it's sort of a bit dicey, but I should be able to pay for all my rent and bills and everything else with, with absolutely no problem, because I have a little bit of extra cash in that account as well. But at the same time, it's kind of, uh, kind of meant that Yes, I mean, the job that I'm in, I get paid fortnightly, which means it's not quite such a probably, uh, such a, a tight belt situation as it could be. But I have spent 
literally, literally a lot of those payments came out like the day after I got paid last and I'm not getting paid again until the day before this video goes up. <laughs> so a few days from now and I'm just like, oh, I need to get paid again, I need to get paid again. I don't feel like I can spend any money until I get paid again. Um, I mean, fortunately, I've got like a £50 food budget, which I take out and use in cash. So I know exactly how much money I can theoretically spend if I need food or whatever. But that's just a food budget. Um, I mean, I'm not a huge spender anyway. So I'm not somebody that, like, you know, I'll switch my money away here on this, that or the other. In fact, part of the reason why it's been so hard is I don't like spending money and I'm having to spend large amounts of money all in one go. <laughs> and I'm like... No, no. Um, but you know, fingers crossed, everything goes forward the way that it's supposed to. It will be worth it. It's just, you know, for somebody who doesn't like spending money to begin with, and for somebody who, you know, I I have you know spent a lot of time saving up this money, and I've been fortunate to be able to here, there, and everywhere sort of gather up like the money for deposit which is one of the the only savings account at the moment that still has money in it because <laughs> that doesn't need to come out just yet and i'm you know i'm in, i'm in the same mindset as my solicitor in not withdrawing that money until the you know absolute last moment i absolutely have to um in order to complete everything because <laughs> it's a large amount of money i don't want to do anything with and so i absolutely have to um a large amount of money for me but you know on the flip side of that once I'm in my own property because I'm no longer going to be saving for the help to buy I should recover my savings fairly quickly in fact you know the next two pays it, I, I know that because I'm no longer putting the money into the help to buy I'm just going to bring it straight into my savings that I'm already going to be like part way to recovering the money from that particular savings account um sort of you know couple of months and I should have that savings back in there and stuff like that but at this point in time it's just kind of like oh my money is gone what am I gonna do <laughs> there can't be any emergencies um so yeah I mean I, I know who like an odd part of the home ownership journey to sort of focus on but I think very much for, for anybody who's like me who is in a, a low lower income situation uh, being aware that there are going to be other expenses and some of them you do need kind of up front um it's worth maybe thinking about how you're saving things if you are saving things and how you're going to sort of pay for all of that and you know i'm i'm in a situation where i did have the savings there and yes i don't like the fact that those savings are gone right now but i did have the savings there and i was aware that i was going to have to use those savings still didn't make me happy to use this <laughs> as I like having money in my accounts but I don't like although it was like really funny when um beginning of this month because obviously the the interest you earn on the account is based on like how much money has it been well or the, the total amount of money that's been in there during the month and not the amount of money that's in there at the end of the month uh so I did actually get interest on uh one of the savings accounts that has no money left in it and it's now got like 16p of interest or something ridiculous like that <laughs> that might have been less than 16 so it wasn't a huge amount but it made me really laugh when i saw it so i was like there's money in that account again yay <laughs> um but yeah no i mean it for, for somebody like me who doesn't like spending money to begin with and doesn't like I mean I've had situations in the past where I've financially struggled and it's not been through any fault of my own it's been stupid the house and it's screwed you over or screwed me over um you know things I couldn't really control that much and you know having to pay off bills and stuff on my own that had been queued between two people because I'd been screwed over so I, I've been in a situation before where I've financially struggled and it stressed me out um, and there was some stuff at the beginning of last year which also ate into some of my savings which fortunately I was eventually able to, to recover via other means but um, le legitimate means um, 
the company that I work for pay any holiday that you haven't used through the year back to you at your year end. Um, so I was able to recover that money that way. It was annoying, but I was able to do it. Uh, it meant that I couldn't do what I usually do when I get that money, which is treat myself. <laughs> usually it's like, yeah, I haven't taken any holiday in like however many months. I don't, I don't take enough time off and I know I need to start taking it. And that's, that's kind of like the aim of the last couple of years, but I couldn't really then take time off last year because I needed that money to replace the money that I'd had to use. And again, it wasn't, it wasn't my fault that I had to use that money. It's over by the same housemate. I haven't seen her for five years. How does that happen? <laughs> long, long, complicated situation. You may, may sometime explain it to you, but probably not. Um, so yeah, whenever I'm in a situation where I feel like I'm financially struggling, whether or not it's actually true, it does stress me out. Um, and I know that technically speaking, I'm not financially struggling in the situation. I mean, basically. I feel like I can't spend any money, but in reality, my food budget's already been taken out and there's nothing to stop me from using it. I'm just sort of putting my limitations on myself, kind of unnecessarily, because spending money stresses me out. <laughs> um, I get paid again in a few days and then I'll be able to relax and, or relax a little bit more. Um, but right now I'm kind of like, feeling very stressed about it, even though I probably shouldn't be feeling very stressed about it because I knew these expenses were a thing that I would have to deal with. Um, it just felt like I was suddenly doing it all very quickly in one go and it's a lot of money. <laughs> it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money for someone who doesn't earn very much. Um, well, on the flip side, like, I know because I'm not a huge spender anyway, and because I'm going to be able to save the majority of my money not in the help to buy anymore, so as actual savings, I will recover that money really quickly. Um, and then there's things like when I move out of here, I'm going to get my deposit back, which is, you know, not a huge deposit. I um, don't remember actually what the deposit for this place was. Uh, it's somewhere in, in the uh, information and stuff I have. But again, I, you know, the, there are legitimate ways where I'm going to recover my savings um, over the next few weeks and months, but in the shortfall, it's me just having spent a lot of money and it's feeling kind of stressed about that. In fact, I'm more stressed about that than I am stressed about anything else. It's like, oh no, I swear, but yeah, that's absolutely fine, not worried about that at all. I am sort of reasonably happy with what I think is going to show up. Um, there might be one or two things that might show up that you know might be a bit of an issue, but I, I'm fairly confident that that's not going to. I think I think we, you know, touch wood, will be okay with that. Not stressed about whether or not I will get my mortgage approved because it's on the lower. Well, I say it's on the lower end. It's about it's about where I should be able to get a mortgage based on my earnings. Um, actually, fairly comfortably. Um, you know, within the, the range that I should be able to get and you know, my mortgage advisor wouldn't put me forward for it if it was, you know, not likely for me to get it. Um, they don't want to be wasting their time, they don't want to be wasting the bank's time, so, yeah, you know, I'm fairly confident, you know, that should all go forward okay. Um, I probably should be more stressed about, you know, somebody trying to steal my property from me. <laughs> But I also know that my offer is fairly near the asking price and this property's been on the market for a while. So there is a good chance that nobody's going to to, to gazump me. Um, but at the same time, it's, you know, it's something I should be feeling more stressed about. But no, I'm more stressed about the fact that I don't have any money right now. <laughs> and even when I say that, that's not completely true. I do have money. I have the money to, to pay all my bills and, you know, because um, I, I split my bills across the month as well. So I don't have all my bills coming out at once um, because I get paid fortnightly. So, yeah, no, there's there's no reason why I should be feeling as stressed about this as I do. But I think it's because I just don't like spending money. It's the same as, like, all the phone calls really stress me out. And it wasn't like what I was having to deal with, it wasn't like the waiting part of things, it wasn't you know, 
worrying about what I should be doing and should not be doing, it was having to make the phone calls. So if there are two things that make me anxious and stressed, it's making phone calls and feeling like I don't have any money. <laughs> Both of which not things that, you know, necessarily stress everybody out, but you know, they're, 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 that's definitely the most stressful things I've been finding about this situation. Um, so yeah, um, my advice for any first time buyers who are on the lower end of the income brackets is yes, your deposit is absolutely crucial and essential and I would advise it help to buy because that is going to have a lot of benefits for you or if not help to buy then maybe your lifetime ISA. Just look, look into both of those, decide which one of those is going to work best for you and go with that one because at the end of the day, it's going to help you out so much, financially speaking. Um, but be aware that there are going to be some upfront costs and if you don't have the savings there to cover them, then it's going to screw you a little bit. And I did have the savings there to cover them, but I don't like not having the savings in my savings account and that's kind of stressful for, for me. Um, even though I do have, I, I had anticipated it and I did have uh, money there for it, still became very stressed with having to not spend my money because I don't like spending money. <laughs> <laughs> so be prepared to spend money. I think I think that's what I'm going with here. Um, okay. So yeah. Um, next time we are going to be talking about my delightful little rebel girls. Um, technically speaking, this week is a year anniversary since I, I got them. Um, but I'm going to be talking about them on the next one because I don't plan things out very well. I don't plan things out very well. Um, so yeah, um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I hope you're sort of looking forward to the next one and I will see you next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya.